so for this lesson, for this lesson we're going to paint Louis Lake, which is near uh, Jug Handle Mountain, above Payette Lake and McCall. Again, just like I do in all my paintings, I'm going to start with toning the canvas. And I tone the canvas with using some of the warm mud that I've mixed. If you need more information on the warm mud, you can go to my lesson on palette organization. It's on YouTube. The formula for my, my palette and what I use for toning the canvas. I use, I use a warm and cool system and I, this is my warm mud that I mix using my warm colors. This is easy. You could probably use like raw sienna or yellow ochre. I just like to mix it out of my, my red, blue, and yellow pigments so that it has the same colors, the same, the same basic colors in it that I'm going to be using on top of it. It just, to me, it just coordinates a whole lot better. Now I put, I put that tone on and then I wipe it down. I, I just don't like working on a white surface. If there's a little bit of a little bit of a value to it, just a little tone, it seems to help me psychologically get started. Also, toning a canvas is a good way for me to uh, get in the mood to paint. Now what I'm doing is dividing my canvas into thirds. I, this, there's that one's over there. I divide my canvas into thirds vertically and horizontally. This gives me my four, you know, my center of interest will go probably, primary center of interest will go in one of these points, and then diagonally I'll, I will have a second center of interest. After I tone that, I wipe, I wipe this tone off of my palette so that I have more room to mix. The second stage is I'm going to start drawing this. Now I'm going over to the other side of the palette and using my cool mud. And now, one of the things I want you to note on this photograph is that the, the uh, horizon line is right across the center. If I paint it this way, especially with this reflection, I have two paintings, two separate paintings of equal weight. The viewer is not going to know which one is more dominant, which one is more important. So I have to tell the viewer that by, by, moving the, by having two separate shapes. Now I've got a, I should probably be using a T-square, but I'm going to try to freehand this horizon line across. And it looks like here, this, I've got this peninsula coming in from the right. I'm going to take this, this line right here and bring it about two-thirds of the way across. And then I've got this area right here. I can see where you know, that drops down. This is closer than the, this shore is closer than this shore, so it's, so in my painting it's lower. So I bring it down and now that shape, see I, I don't want to go in with a bunch of pine trees. I want to get that shape in. I'll do the pine trees later. When you're laying out a painting the first thing you do is break the canvas into a series of shapes. So you can see now I have this shape, I have this shape, and I have this shape and they're all different weights. Okay now I've got this foreground thing. Since I moved the horizon down you know, there, this, this distance may be a little different, but I'm going to just, you know, chop off that corner right there. And I don't, I don't want to end that corner in the center of the canvas either. I want to bring it down to the first third, or, which, if this were a stream of water, I'd probably take it to the second third, so I have more, more of a diagonal movement. This one I'm going to probably bring down to that first third, since this is a lake. Okay, now, I, now I've got this little peninsula that comes in from this side, and what I don't want is for those to be equal either. I, you know, this, this comes out about a third of the way out here. So this one, this one I'm going to bring, I'm going to make it steeper, and I'm not going to bring it as far into the canvas. Now one of the, one of the problems with this, too, is this photograph is really dark. So it's really hard to see the detail in there. So I'm going to have to invent quite a bit, quite a bit of that. I don't want to leave this, you know, when I'm done, I don't want that to be just a silhouette. So now my next shape will be going back to the, I've got two mountains back here. I've got the, it's kind of this foothill thing here in the front. And I'm going to bring that up. I'm going to come up a little bit. I'm going to come, you know, I'm going to come right to, I guess, that first third. And then I'm going to break it down, and this there's another little slope here. You know, I'm just and I I, I don't want I don't want this slope to be equal to this slope. 
So I think I'm going to round that over. I'll, I'll deal with some of this, some of these pr design problems as I paint. Now, the big mountain in the background, you can see on the photograph how that slope perfectly matches that slope. If I paint it that way, it will be very, that's called a tangent. And now I have to tell the viewer that that mountain is further back. Now I can do that by making that mountain, you know, come in here, but it's, that, that mountain is actually, you know, quite beautiful and I want it, I want it to, I want that to dominate the painting a little more. So I'm going to make that mountain a little larger. And I'll have to invent some of the slope over here, but that's okay. So there I've basically got, I've got this, uh, the, the canvas into shapes. Now I've got a shape here, shape one. I've got the water, which is shape two. These two peninsulas are shape three. This mountain is actually, the whole thing is, is shape four. I could call this, you know, shape four and shape five uh, and shape six. I, when, I, when I first do my drawing, my, I am not interested in drawing the things. I'm interested in recording the shapes in a pleasing way and, and, and simplifying the composition. I need to have most of my painting in about five to seven different shapes. Okay, so now I've, now I've got my drawing done. And the first thing I want, I'm looking at this now, and now, now I'm going to do my value study. And with the value study, I'm, things standing upright in the foreground tend to be the darkest value. So that's going to be these rocks. And I'm not painting rocks. I'm just, I'm looking at these shapes in here, and I'm just getting some dark paint on there. I want, I want that dark is going to help me to make this come forward. Now, my next step back is going to be this tree, this timbered slope coming in from the left. So now I'm taking some of my cool mud and I'm putting some blue, some cool blue and some cool yellow in it. I want to make, I want to make a cool green and a little bit of mud just, just to knock some of that green, knock some of the green color down. So now I'm going to also add a tiny bit of white to this and I want my green to have a little bit of blue. If I were doing these trees in the, in the, in the foreground, if I was putting a tree right here in the front, it would be just mud, blue, and yellow. But since I'm going back a ways, I want some atmosphere. I want some air between me and, that, and those foothills. So I'm adding some blue to it, adding some blue and white. As things go back into space, they get lighter and they get bluer. The atmosphere washes out the value, and the color of the atmosphere is generally blue. You know, I mean, it can, it can be a, a number of other things too. It can be really colored by the light. Now, one of the things you can't see back here is the horizon. Not the horizon, but the shoreline. So I'm going to come across and just leave a tiny little edge there for the shoreline, and, and I, then I'm going to put the reflections of those trees in here. And the trees, the reflection will only come down to here because there's that land peninsula sticking down in. Now these trees over here are, it looks like about the same distance away. So I'm going to use this, even though they're, they're out in the light, these are in shadow, these are in the light. But I'll, I'll do that light stuff later. Right now I'll do them pretty much the same value. Now see, so when I started out doing this slope, I just did this kind of a line up there. Now I'm putting color on it, and I'll let it become more jagged. And each each stage of the painting from now on, I'll you know I'll enhance these tree shapes a little more. Now, one of the things that's, that's happening too is as I come across, you know I've got some darker color in my brush. And I'm pressing down on that. What I want is for these trees are further away from the viewer, so they're lighter and bluer. These trees get darker and a little greener as they come forward. As things get closer, you can see more of the local, what's what I call the local color, the actual color of the object. Anything that, that far back is generally the color of the object plus the color of the atmosphere with consideration for the color of the light. Okay, now I've got that, that 
edge going up there. So I'm going to give myself just a little reference line coming down here, and I'm putting my reflections in. Now, my reflections, it's really important that I get my reflections in with thick paint. I can get really convincing water if I use only vertical brush strokes in my reflections, you know, no matter what I'm doing, even if it's sky, I do vertical brush strokes in my reflections. And then at the end I go over with some horizontal brush strokes for surface tension and the water looks quite convincing. Okay, so there, there's my, my foreground vertical which is basically, that's just my, my cool mud. Then this is my cool mud with some blue and yellow and white in it. Now I'm going back further. So what I'm going to do now, now I'm putting some more white in my, in my green, and I'm adding some blue to it. And it looks like I've added quite a bit of blue. I'll test it now. I'm going to test it here. I, see, I want to know, I'm not going to start these, these mountains out in here, because I don't know what that value relationship is. If I start them right next to this mountain, you see I can immediately see that the color I'm using is lighter, is lighter than the color of those trees. This mountain down here is, this is pretty solidly timbered. There's some areas of, uh, of rockiness, and I'll, I'll put that in later. That's a, that's a second, that's another value family. I guess the first thing I should do, too, is get some of the reflections. This, this mountain right here is going to, I'm just going to give myself some reference for the reflections of that mountain that I'm putting in. And as I go back, I, I have the option. I can make it a little lighter and a little bluer as I go back, or I can just, it's uh, ridges, so I could just make them all the same color. Or not, pardon me, not the same color, but the same value. The, the color never, I don't think, is, is never quite as important as the value is. So now, see, I'm going to leave just a little bit of an indication of where the shoreline is, the far shoreline of the lake. And you can see in the photograph, some of the darkest values in this photograph are clear back here. They're clear back here, even clear back into here, and the water. You can see the values are quite a bit different in my painting. I, I'm using uh, your rules of, to try to establish an atmospheric perspective. If I, if I copied the values in the photograph, it would just look like I had copied a photograph. It wouldn't look like I was out in nature painting. Okay, so now, I, now I've, got, I've got this big mountain behind here. This is almost too symmetrical, so I'm going to bring some of this mountain up, just making an editorial decision. You know, you're, you're trying to portray a particular scene, but your loyalty is the, to the, your painting, not to the reference. You have to do whatever it is you need to do to your reference to make it work, to make it work as a painting. Now I'm, now I'm going up to that background mountain, and I'm, I'm getting into the edge of the color I've been using. Now the top of that mountain has a lot of rock, so what I'm doing now is I'm adding blue and red. To, to, I, I do blue and yellow to get the color of the foliage in the, in the trees. If I, want, if I want it to appear to be rock, I have to make it somewhat purple. The, the color of the earth is red, the color of the light is yellow, and the color of the air is blue. So I'm always juggling those three colors. I want to get rid of my lines. I, especially like when I'm doing the sky, I don't want to have a line around that mountain. So I'm putting my, making sure that I get enough paint over the top of that line that it doesn't show. There's my, my first, this is, these are my vertical values. They get lighter, they start with the darkest in the front, and they get lighter and lighter and lighter as they go back. I've got to throw some reflection down in here too. And then I've, I've got some, some bare ridges and a few areas here in this timber. So I'm just going to throw some brush strokes in there to emulate some of those shapes I can see. And I'm going to use a little bit lighter color to get a shoreline across the back of the lake. Foreground verticals are my darkest value. My background verticals are my second value family. I've got three stages to my background. Now, my third value family is the foreground. So what I'm going to do now, I'm, I'm going to take a little white. I'm going to take, see, I, I want some bare land here. I'm going to take some white, a little bit of mud, some red, a little bit of yellow. I'm just going to experiment around so I can get kind of a kind of a dirt amber sort of a color. 
and then now I guess I'll start up here and this you know there's rocks on here and this is the kind of the area I'm blocking in the area between the rocks and where the rocks I use kind of vertical brush strokes I'm laying my brush strokes down at, at an angle here I want the the land to appear that it's it's sloping down to the right so and then I'll, I'll come back and work these rocks later with this system I don't work I don't do anything with as far as illustrating any of my uh, objects until later in the game right now I just want to get my value system down the shoreline here I'm putting in a little bit lighter because the shoreline is laying horizontal now back over here on the other side I'm just going to take a little cool mud and I'm gonna, I still want my shoreline to be lighter than the trees, but I want it darker than that because the sun is coming from the left. So the sun is not going to be hitting that shoreline. Now the, I guess I should go across the back. I'm, gonna, I'm throwing some light there, but I'm going to leave it a little darker and cooler over there so it might appear that it, that it wanders around. So now the last value is the sky. I keep harping about value, but value is what the whole thing is based on. Value 1, things standing vertical in the foreground. Value 2, which can be a series of values, is anything standing vertical in the background. Value 3 is the horizontal planes, and value 4 is the lightest value, and that's the value in the sky. So I'm going to start now with, I'm taking my, some of my warm blue, which I, I use Viridian. It's a very, a very greenish kind of a blue. And I'm going to, I'm going to start here, at, I, and I all virtually always start my sky at the bottom of the sky. I want the sky at the bottom is kind of a, is a warm, a lighter warm blue than the than the sky at the top. Now I'm going to take that up a little ways further. So now I'm going to put a little bit of that over here, and see what I'm not going to do is take it up over the mountain. I want the sky needs to pass behind the mountain. Now the next thing I'm going to do is put get the reflection of the sky down here. And again, I'm pulling everything in the water I put in with vertical brush strokes. I'm not touching the trees or anything. I, I want to keep this, there's so much white in this that I want to keep it as clean as I can. See up here, all, all, all through the painting, I'm kind of running color into color, except when I get to the sky. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit, just a little bit of cool blue to the sky, and then I'm going to start going up just a little bit. I added cool blue and white. I just want to get a little bit of a, of a color shift. The sky gets darker and cooler as it goes up. And then I'll bring that kind of up over the mountain, and I'll bring it down the other side. And I'm going to take that up to the top of the canvas here. I find myself just, you know, I'm sloppy and I, and I leave out some areas. There's some areas where I really don't touch the, the canvas. And, I, and those hopefully will, will become clouds as I move along. Now as I come across, see that the sky is, the sun is on the left. So as I go to the right, the sky gets darker and cooler. And I'll get a, put just a little bit of this cool down in here just, to, just so I have some of that in the water. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do, I'm taking some white. You know, when I got to the sky, that's the first warm color I used in the painting. Now I'm going to use another warm color. I'm taking some white, a, a clean brush, a brush just as clean as you can get it, a little bit, a white with a little bit of warm red and a little bit of warm yellow. And now I'm just going to smear, you know, I, I, don't, want to, I don't want to be really tight and realistic with this. If you get too tight with your clouds, you're going to end up looking like rocks. You know, I, I fill in my sky first, and I just kind of leave out, you know, I spontaneously leave out some areas, and I let those areas become clouds. You know, clouds don't have shape. They're whatever, you know, they're blowing in the wind, that's it. They don't have an anatomy. The sun is hitting them. So that I want light, wispy clouds. I, I'm not putting a purple shadow under my clouds because I, I, I want them to be light and wispy. It, ma it just makes a lot a little friendlier feeling to the whole painting. Okay so now my painting is blocked in. So what I want to do now, I'm, now I'm taking some cool blue where I started blocking it in from the bottom to the top. Now I'm starting up at the top 
and I'm just making sure I have some you know, soft edges coming across. I'm not leaving hard edges around my clouds. I'm fussing with the edges of my clouds. I want them to be, I want this to be just kind of a light, wispy, beautiful Idaho day. As I come across to the left, the cool blue, the cool darker blue is primarily on the right. I'm wiping my brush out. I'm not, I'm not taking all the cool blue out of it, but I just, I wiped quite a bit of it out and now I'm, now I'm going to my warm blue. And coming and getting the, the right hand side of the sky is warmer because the sun is coming from this side and the bottom of the sky is warmer. So what happens, the sky tends to go from lighter warmer on the lower side that's toward the sun and go darker and cooler at kind of a diagonal as it goes up towards the side that's away from the sun. Okay, so now I've, now I've got that done. I started my painting from the front to the back. If I start from the front and work back, I can actually see where I'm going at each step better than I can if I start at the back and work front. A lot of the instructors that I've taken classes from have you paint the sky first and the mountain second and, and you gradually work forward and that really doesn't work perceptually. Psychologically, perceptually, you're able to see that your value shifts better if you start from the front and work back. So what I'm going to do now is, now I'm going to the background mountain. See, I, start, I block in from front to back, I finish from back to front. So what I'm going to do now, I've got the color of that mountain. I'm going to, now I'm going to, going to look at the shape of the mountain a little more. And now, see, I, I didn't want to touch that mountain color. in. I didn't want to touch the sky into the mountain because then I get a dirty sky. But now I can overlap my mountain shapes into the sky. See, I can obliterate that edge now. If I drag some of the sky color down into the mountain, it just looks like a highlight on the mountain. So now I'm looking at the photograph and I want to, I want to come down a little steeper on this side. Now there's a little bit of an area back here I can see in the painting that looks a little more horizontal. I'm going to, uh, well, I guess I can do that when I'm putting my highlights on. Okay, now the first thing I want to do, I'm going, I'm taking the color, I'm taking the color I blocked in the mountain with. If the sky, if the sun is coming from the left, I do my downhill slopes. I don't know if you can see it, I'll use a little more white. I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit. The slopes that are in shadow are lighter than the body of the mountain. The reason for this, this is one of the first ways you can, you can spot you know, kind of a, some amateur painting, is that the people will darken the unlit side of the mountain, when in fact what you're getting is reflected light coming back. The darkest place on the mountain is your block-in color. Everything on top of that is lighter. Now there are exceptions, but uh, I won't go into those because they just become too confusing. But it, it has to do with you know some, some atmospheric conditions. Now I've taken a little bit of that color and just smeared some into the reflections down here in the water. Now I want to go to the other side and put, start putting my highlights in. So now this, this color, I took the color, my color of the clouds, so I'm adding a little more red to it. So this, is, this is white with a little bit of warm red, a tiny bit of warm yellow was already in it. Now I'm going to come down here to my mountain color and just see how this looks. Because I, I don't want a fully warm color there. I want to warm up this mountain color. Okay, so now I want the light to hit this side of the mountain. So I'm going to come in and see this is a different... See, the highlights over here are the same color, just with more white. The, the, high, the colors over here are different. This is different pigments. This is warm. These are warm colors. I'm overlapping this slope a little bit into the sky. So I, I get rid of that halo of canvas tone. Now there's a little bit of a little bit of a valley in here that's a little wider. And I'm just going to scumble a little paint around here to give it some a little bit of randomness. If it's a little more random, then the viewer has more ability to create the image. The more the viewer is involved in creating the image, the more apt they are to buy it. I'm, I'm imagining this side of the mountain because it's not in the photograph, but I suppose over you know over in here I can. I can have a little, just for some interest, just for some balance. So I've got that color over here, and see it 
just to have a little bit of color over there balances it a lot better. Okay, so now this is a much more difficult part of the painting here. I'm going to throw some, uh, let's see, right over in here I can see some light hitting rocks down here. There's a kind of a rocky slope in here that goes down to the uh, water. And see if I put some of that in, then I've got to come down here and get, see a shift of vertical brush strokes. I'm putting, just putting some of that in the water. So now, now I want to, I want to start getting this to look like trees. And what, I don't like that color real well. I want that color to be a little bit bluer. I want this to be, it's going to be a little more down in the shadows. What I'm doing here is vertical brush strokes. And I'm also adjusting the value. I think that I got, you know, I got these trees, this, these tree-covered slopes blocked in a little bit too light. You know, once, once you have your, uh, once your drawing is done, this is one of the ways my instructor put it to me, once your drawing is done, then you're, you're in the business of correcting mistakes. You want, yeah, I'm doing small adjustments to every stage of the painting. So you can, yeah, I like, I like the look of that a lot better. Now, see this little, the, this area that I put in right here with the, had the slopes coming down? See, now I can come over across the front of that and make it appear to be like it's some rock behind these trees that are in front of it. And all it is is a diagonal brush stroke with that lighter, warmer color and then some verticals with the trees. And what I think I would like to do too, I want to get the sense of the tree line in this. So I'm, I'm going to put just some little indications of some of some trees, tiny trees, up more in these little saddles, these little draws that are up on the mountain, and make the top of this forest a little more irregular, a little more interesting. The more irregular it is, the more little things the viewer has to look at, the, the viewer will stop along the way as they're scanning around the painting. Okay, now as I've kind, I've kind of got that as far as I think I'm going to take it, now this area right here is a little closer to me than this one. So what I'm going to do is I want to make this mount, the, the timber on this one, just a little bit darker. I'm going to take a little bit, I don't want it necessarily bluer because I'm coming forward. But I'm taking, and I'm, so I'm going to add a little tiny bit of yellow to it too. I want a little more color. And sometimes these, these really subtle shifts are really important. And on this, you know, I can I can push the brush, pull the brush, and I'll bring that forest, make it a little, maybe just a little bit ambiguous where the where this ends over here. I know the and I know the bottom the bottom of this slope is closer to me than the top of the slope, so I'm going to make these trees at the bottom a little bit darker too. And then if I just really use the just the edge of my brush, maybe I could get. Look at, just get the look of some trees standing in front of that rock outcropping there. I've, now I, I've got that background pretty well developed. See, I, it's not nearly as complicated as the background here, and I've changed the mountain kind of significantly. But uh, but that's uh, you know that, that's pretty much as complex as I want the background to be. I think. So now now I'm going to add some blue. I want this to be a little darker, a little blue, a little mud. I may have to put a little white in it. And I want some yellow a little bit because this is coming forward. So I've got to test the value here. I kind of like that. It feels like it needs a little more blue. A lot of times I just experiment around a little bit until I get the color I want. So now, now what I want, and you see these, these slopes the trees, the tree shapes are much larger than the tree shapes back there because they're much closer to the viewer. So I can make the top edge of these slopes a lot more interesting by sticking these tall, narrow trees in there. And again, with this, this one, I want, I want these trees darker at the bottom because there's less light hitting the bottom and the bottom of that slope is closer to the viewer. And then I've got to drop some more paint in the uh, reflections. One thing's important with painting is to fix things when you mess up. One of the ways I messed up on this is when I was putting these trees back in here, I didn't put some of that little bit darker color down here in my reflections. So I'm doing that right now. And see, that's just going to give me a, a, some nice variations. 
I don't want a big area where there's only a single color. If you can think of each area, think of your color tones in a, with a music analogy. That it's, you, want, you, you want a chord, not a note. You want every area, you know, you want a certain, you want a value there, but you want, you want it to be made of a, of a number of different, slightly different values. Okay, so now I'm on the other side. I'm coming over it. I'm about the same distance from the viewer here as I am here, but I'm also more in the light. I'm going to take, I'm adding some blue and yellow to this, testing my color. Yeah, it's, I've got it just, it's pretty close to the same value. Uh, there, now you can see on here, this side is darker than this side. That's because I'm going to come back in when I get these tree shapes in and put some, some lighter warms on these so that there's light hitting. But again, over here, these, these tree shapes are tall like these. That also helps them stand in front of the shorter, smaller brush strokes of trees in the background. And as I come forward, you know, I, this, as this kind of angles back towards the viewer, the closest trees are over here on the edge. So I want to, I'm going to darken some of this a little bit. And the trees that, the trees that are in front are also the darkest ones. Now I'm going to come down and hit the reflections. If there's anywhere in your painting you want thick paint, it's in your reflections. And you want thick paint in your reflections because you want to, be, when you come over with the surface tension brush strokes, you want to be able to uh, smear paint. If you don't have uh, nice thick paint, you get a real, you get a kind of an awkward dry brush effect. Okay, so now, now I've got to run, I've got to grab a T-square. One of the things that's important when you're painting a lake is that your far shoreline is as level as you can get it. So what I'm going to do now, now I, I want to get the illusion of light hitting across that, the shoreline in the back. So one of the first things I'm going to do, I'm taking some warm yellow, putting a little bit of my warm, that, well it's warm white with a lot more yellow in it, and I'm going to start I want a few highlights there. So see, I, I want to get the idea that the light is coming from beh around behind that thing. The water that's way back, I want a stream of light hitting across that. So what I'm going to do is take some white and a little bit of my warm blue. I, I, I want to make up the color, pretty much the color that is in the lower part of the sky because that's, that's the color that's going to be reflecting across the lake. So now I'm going to, I'm going to lay my T-square so that the bottom of my T-square is right where I want the shoreline. And then I'm going to start so that I, and so I want, what, what I want to do here is start, is build this warm light coming through in. And see when I'm over in here I can even put a little bit of it there in a couple of places so it appears to go behind those trees. Now I'm going to stand over here so I can and see what, it, what that T-square gives me a good reference for level. Now I'm going to take again. Now I'm going to take some of that, uh, some of this uh, warm. I'm going to get a, now the lights hitting these trees over here. So I'm going to get a little bit of the of warm of water, of highlighted water rippling when it hits the shoreline. And then I'm going to. And see now, see part of this, my, there's almost no paint in my brush. What I'm doing, this is why it's important to, uh, to uh, have thick paint so that I can just go over this almost with no color in my brush and smear over those reflections. And now, now I want to, uh, I'm going to come down towards the bottom 
where the where the sky is actually reflecting is part of the the actual reflection in the in in the uh, painting. I want to get down in here and take some of this color and smear it out. And the same over here. See your your reflections disintegrate as they go down. I want to keep these you know I want to keep these brush strokes level as much as I can. So I, I don't want to pull back that way so much as I want to go I want to take this blue color this, this warm blue into the reflections. I want to disintegrate the reflections at the bottom. So see, I've I, my 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 picture now. I've gone. I've blocked it all in from front to back, and I'm finishing it from back to front. So now, now what I'm going to do? I'm going to look up here, and I'm going to look at now. See, I'm now I'm refining these areas in the foreground. I'm just taking basically some of my cool mud and. And I'm just throwing some shapes in. I'm not, what I'm not trying to do is paint rocks. I'm just getting an interesting interplay of light and dark here. Now I'm going to take a little bit of this blue of the sky and I'm going to put some tops. You know, this is the light that's hitting the tops of these rocks. The rocks are, it's, it's reflected light from the sky that hits the top of the rocks. Okay, then I can take some of this purple and let's see, I want a little, probably a little dark. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna do, I'm just going to add some mud to this purple in here and I'll put the reflected light on this side of my rocks. And then if I really want to, if I if I need to, and I'm not I'm probably not going to do this to every rock, but on the sunlit side, see, I'll just use my warm white. The, the, the rocks are just very highly reflective, and you can get really nice effects on the rocks by just looking at what light is coming from what direction. So again, the the face fa the face that's facing the viewer is my darkest value. Then I put a little bit of the sky color on top of them, the reflected light color down down the shadow side, and a little bit of the warm white on the highlight side. Now one of the things I've got to do is go back again, you know, a lot of times I do get things out of sequence. And that happens a lot when you're painting, but you can go back go back and fix things. So now now I'm mixing a warm green. And one of the, and I have to experiment around. One of the things you really want in your warm green is a little bit of red. This is one of the things that makes green such a difficult color to use. Is you you really kind of always need a little bit of red in it. Now this this slope is in shadow. This slope is in the sun. So, and I'm going to put I'm going to put just a little bit of warm mud in this. And I want to. Just going to put some. I just want to get the illusion of some sunlight hitting these. And see, I'm not. I'm not trying to. You know, I'm not doing fine illustration. I'm not doing every branch of these trees. I might, you know, like there. I might do a little indication of some of light. Just you know, the light is just kind of rippling through this forest. This should have gone in before my reflections, but I can still still put a little bit of that in, and then I can uh, then I can take you know this is an awful long ways back for detail like this, but I can you know just indicate a few tree trunks. It just adds it adds a little bit of interest. 
Now in the, my tree trunks, you see I've got, you know, I put one here, put one over here, you know, now where I, somewhere over here, probably over in here, I need a cluster. You know, your, your, the tree trunks shaped like that, they, they have to be composed. You know, I, I, I can, I, I, I've got, what, I've got, what, one, two, three, I've got three or four of them right over here, and I've got a cluster of them here. So about a third of my tree trunks are in here, and the rest are over here. One of the things you want to do is, is try, and I don't always get it, but try to always work in one-third, two-thirds, even as, you know, like one-third of your tree trunks, or, you know, th this shape right here should be bigger than this shape. You know, I'm not sure if, if it is or not. But see, this shape should be, this shape is twice as big as that shape. So I've got one third here, two thirds over here. If you just keep doing that sort, you know, always, and that's one of the reasons I block off my uh, grid at the beginning, is to try to keep myself more and more and more as I paint uh, aware and cognizant of the rule of thirds. See, even here, you know, I've got these rocks over here, but I've got a cluster. Of rocks, so I've got you know most of my space, two thirds of my space is right here, with these little random things around it, and I find I sell, I do that more and more unconsciously as time goes on. So that's Jug Handle, Louis Lake at Jug Handle Mountain at McCall, Idaho, a Trophy Trout Lake, yeah, another way to attend church in Idaho.